World 4 is kind of the most disappointing, and so I have to disappoint everyone because I don't have a pun to introduce Aptfunk. But it, but it says Tower of Power right there. Come on. Come on, you have nothing it's... to work with? No, I'm so... I was going to say, like, oh, the music's kind of funky, so, but it's still more jazzy vibe, I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, shame. Phenometer is running on low. Hmm. But this is why I'm not an LP superstar. Nope. All the LP shoop stars have like tens of thousands of puns. That's what I've learned. Just always ready to go at all times. Yep. I've got a list right next to me. So there's that platform down there, which means we're gonna have to climb back up again. But it's worth it because A, we get two lives. And we also have to pick up some other important stuff. Yeah, so this is like required, I'd imagine. Yeah, and it also creates the annoying uh, necessity in all of these tower climb screens, because there's a few of them in this level, where you have to ride these platforms all the way around in case there's something around, you know, a side that you would never look at. Oh. Uh, there's something important there. It's kind of annoying. And it's pretty much just a long stretch of nothing, right? Yeah. 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 So, were you one of the people who played this when it came out? Um, I did, but that was a long time ago, so I don't remember very much. I do remember the castle levels being quite a pain. The castle levels, I mean, the reason I say they're disappointing is because there's actually some really cool, interesting stuff that goes on in the castle levels. The problem is that the game waits until this, you know, this late in its game to actually pull any of it out, and it never... it's this annoying thing of things that come once and then just go away forever. Yeah, the, the major problem I've seen with this game so far is that there's just so few things to work with. There's like, you know, one level's worth of uh, obstacles and then like, that's it for three chapters. Yeah, the um, pretty much, that's been about the same thing that every single uh, of my, all of my co-commentators have been saying, like, there's really nothing to say after a while. Yeah, you got this, your... Um, you got your, this, like, spinning platforms, thing. you got, like, your Dantinis, your Trident Dantinis, and then, like, what, falling platforms? I, I don't know, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's these these boxes to, I guess, the closest thing that you can get to a puzzle. Basically, you just have to push the boxes out. If you touch the button, it resets them. Yeah. And you're trying to, like sort them so that you can climb up, make like a makeshift staircase to climb up, but you actually don't need to make a staircase at all. You can just push out the second one, climb, jump up to that, and then jump up to the top one. Yeah. Well, that's convenient, because this seems really fidgety otherwise. It is. So I mentioned way back in the first video that there's a trick to telling like how which of the regular gems is a color gem in disguise. See how that one in the middle is kind of hanging a little lower? Um, no, I didn't actually see that. It's a, it's something that, like, you need to, you have to get it, like, pointed out a couple of times, but then you start noticing it. At least that was how it was with me. Hmm. Uh, it'll, you'll see it a few more times in this video. Alright. Basically, right. yeah, the, the colored gem, for some reason, hangs, like, floats a little lower than the regular gems. Also, when Croc takes damage on bars, he inexplicably lets go. Oh, yeah. That... Did that happen in Crash? I think in Crash he just held on still, didn't he? Yeah, if he had, if he had an extra hit, yeah. I'm sure he just like got his invincibility. Also, he, you know, he moved way too quickly for that to ever be a problem. Pretty much, yeah. This this just seems obnoxious. More obnoxious is at the end. See how there's a crack platform at the end of there? Yeah. Oh, so do you have to like time dropping onto it and then jumping onto the next platform? It's not that you have to time it, it's that you couldn't see it by the time you actually get to where you're hanging above it. Oh. Because the camera is really good in this game. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, best. I just don't see why, like, the gems can't all be colored, so that you don't have to... Or, sorry, the colored gems just can not be hidden. Because at this point, it just makes you to go through all the tedium of getting every single gem. Yeah, and the um, and even even with that whole you know, being able to tell which one is a hidden gem, 
it doesn't matter when, you know, if it's just a single gem on its own, it only really helps if there's a row of gems. So, yeah, if there's a single gem or if it was like underwater, you just have to collect every single gem. Yeah, not to mention you have to actually be close enough to see it, I'd imagine. I always jump on that cob for some reason, because it's like right in front of me. This is I th also supposed to be kind of a puzzle, I think, except it's not a puzzle at all. I don't know, it's hmm. just, it's a bit of an odd screen. You smash these boxes and another cog falls down. Huh. It really looks like it could be interesting, but does anything really happen with that? Yeah, once we get the other two cogs to fall down, uh, some... It's, I mean, ultimately it's just, you hit the box and a new platform appears to let you move ahead to the next area. I don't remember if you actually need to get all three of these cogs um, in place for the platform at the end to actually take you to the door. You'll see what I mean. Okay, just like all the gears start turning and whatnot. Yes. Oh, yes, okay. And I don't know if you actually need them to be moving for this platform to move. But in any case, it's kind of a cool progression thing, but yeah. nothing actually happens because of that. Like, it's ultimately you know, just a visual thing. Yeah, also there's no, like, actual connection to the platform, so there's no real reason why that turning would make the platform move. Yeah, still, which, is why I, which, is why I said I, yeah which is why I said I didn't actually know if that's, uh, if that's the case. More of yeah. these spike balls. Oh yeah, the ones that were just randomly floating in some level in the last world. Yeah, now they make a bit more sense, like, ooh, torture or chamber or whatever. Yeah, the medieval theme. Medieval theme, that's what I'm going for. And jelly, medieval. Medieval deal with him. I find it a bit strange that they went for the castle motif, like, so early in the game. Usually that's, like, final level or penultimate level. Well, I mean, they they just go with the theme for the entire world, and this is the final world. Oh, it is? Yeah, they only have four worlds, well, five, but the fifth one is the secret one. Oh, hmm. It's a lot shorter than I remember it being, then. Yeah, that tends to happen with LT in general. Yeah. So, um, you may have noticed, or you may not have, I noticed it, but, um, we've only gotten a couple of gobos. I think two of them we've gotten. But we've been through several screens, we've already gotten all five gems. Oh, mini games, huh? Not mini games. There's this guy who freaks out, and when he's doing that, he can hurt you if you go for the buttons. Huh. It's kind of pointless. Oh, what really was that weird. sound? It's the sound of bars lifting up or something. This is an enemy that is one of the only ones that you have to ground pound on. Because otherwise he'll hit you with his scythe if you try to spin into him. Oh, okay. So that's like... Hmm. That's like the only threatening me melee enemy then, huh? Just about. The worms were kind of threatening in, you know, the small worms, because um, it was really hard to get a ground pound on them. These guys have massive hitboxes, though. Yeah. Oh, and now those bars are down. Kill this guy. So is this like a maze then? Or is, is, am I giving it a bit too much credit? No, it's a, it's, it's just kind of like a, a dungeon. Like, oh, this is, you know, the goers were actually captured and they're in cages. Oh, okay. And, it's, and it finally changes up the formula that it's been going with for basically the entire game, where you find a gobbo in just about every single screen uh, in a level. Five screens, five or six screens to a level. And then you'd get the, and then you get the bonus. It's, you know, we're finally changing things up, but it's annoying and disappointing that it's doing it this late in the game because now you're used to, you know, you're expecting that oh, there's going to be a gobble on every screen, and when you don't find one, you think like something's wrong. Yeah, it's really strange that area too because it feels completely different from the room, from like the inside rooms of previous levels. Hmm. Oh, this guy. Look at that little scamp. Well, oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Ah, I got him. That was the same guy that was in World 2 when I was wondering why is he here. Ah, uh, yeah, they steal gobbos. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, he was but the guy who was just standing there, right? Yeah, but they don't yeah. do anything else. Hmm. Can he, like, steal a Gabo in that level, or only in this one? I imagine if you, like, hit him... Oh, I think... No, in, the, in World 2 he could do that. In this one, I think... If you had killed him and then let him come back, he could have taken one again. Oh, okay. I think. I don't know, I've never been bad enough to let that happen. Yeah. Okay, so look at the row of gems over there. The middle one is kind of hanging a little bit lower. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw it that time. Yeah, like you see it a few times and then you suddenly like notice it all over the place. I feel like at first I would just think that that's sort of how they set it up. Rather than that actually meaning it's a colored gem. That's a really strange way to indicate that. Well, I'm not sure if it's them. The thing is, I, I, I would genuinely have no idea if it's them actually indicating it, or if it's just a someone fucked up and like, oh, whoops, I put this a little bit down on the y-axis. Wait, I think on that previous three gems without the colored gem, that seemed like the second gem was lower too, though, wasn't it? Uh, I think you're imagining it. Okay, maybe. So this is this is where that thing you mentioned before happens. You have to time this, but it's annoying because again you can't see where it is right below you, and and you can't turn your yes. camera either, right? Yeah, and obviously it's still my fault entirely for not lining the jumps up properly. I, I guess that was sarcasm. It's really not. Yeah, I don't know. It's just really hard to. Ah, I don't. I don't know how you're supposed to see that properly to do that. Which, the moving platforms or the cracked platform? Uh, more so the moving platform, because like right now it's off screen, and like while yeah. you can turn, you can't. Wait. Um, oh, I guess it kind of works. Oh. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Never mind. I guess I'm just gonna. No, I, I guess I wasn't actually standing over the edge there. I, I decided to not edit any of this because I like the music. Yeah, pretty swinging. That, that's like the one thing that is like consistently good with this game, is the music. It's a shame it was wasted on, you know, this. Yeah, but it is good. Apparently, I'm not sure if it's, if, not sure if it's the music or if it's a uh, sound effects thing. We can also hear Arandante cackling in the background, which, uh, on these inside portions. And uh, over at the end of these screens, we get these portraits of... Oh, yeah. I, I don't know, I can't read the, te the text on that. That one says Mrs. D, which I also can't tell mm. if that's his wife or his mother. Yeah, not sure. I remember those, though. That was a cool little detail. Uh, yep. Alright, so jump anything special with this room? Oh. Nope, not gonna jump on the thing. Yeah. Um, there's those swing, there's those ball and chain things, and they're a little bit more menacing. Yeah, because they're just before and after pits this time, I guess. Can they actually uh, hit you while you're going through here, or is it only later on? They could hit you here. Oh, actually, oh, that's the only point where they can hit you. Never mind. Yeah. It's a bit confusing. Alright, yeah, so this is definitely new. Yeah, it, kind of, it reminds me of that uh, one bit from Rainbow Ride in Mario 64. With the, uh, the flamethrower. It kind of reminds me of that for some reason. Yeah, well, moving platform, obstacle, man. Yeah. Near enough. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess that is the reason. The thing, yeah, the thing is, the whole game kind of just blends together at a certain point. Yeah, I mean, like, this this um, world is at least distinctly different. Everything else, though, like, I can't really remember much details about. Mainly because at least this world doesn't have any of those, um... Those lava, you know, underground lava areas. Yeah. The ones that all just use the same wall texture and whatnot. Yeah, god. Um, oh, this is, yeah, this is 
This is again the um, Trident Dantinis being their only method of making, trying to make a room difficult. Yeah. There's two Trident Dantinis, you can't possibly get to them unless you holler. Oh yeah, which and is yeah, like a glitch, right? Them. Yeah, and you just, and they just uh, shoot at you. But it's wholly ineffectual, because you just... You run. just run by, yeah. Yeah. And they, like, they don't shoot you when you're stopping to get the boxes, so... Like, unless you're really bad at running in a straight line. Well, better than them being placed in a dickish manner, at least. Which we'll also get later. I'm not yeah. sure if it's in this video or not, but we will obviously get it. This game just loves that too much to give up on it. But hey, it's the exact same kind of challenge of Trident Dantini from a distance. Yeah. Are there, like, any other ranged uh, enemies, or is it just them? There's the, um, scorpions that, uh, like, scorpions? There are a couple of, like, enemies that shoot tiny projectiles that you usually kill before they even hit you. This is a cool bonus stage. Lots of, uh, back and forths. Oh. Wow, that, that's pretty awful. Uh, compared to compared to some bonus stages, at least I think it's alright. Yeah, just seems annoying to have to keep going back and forth. Because it's pretty much just the same jump over and over. Yeah, it's um, a similar sort of thing. It's a, there's a similar kind of bonus stage that gets repeated uh, later there's on. There's a Trident Dantini. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Uh, yeah, there's a this kind of bonus stage happens again in this next video, where he, where yeah, the platforms at least uh, are changing up a little bit. You know, okay. you'll see what I mean you know, in the next video when that happens. But gotcha. that's a little interesting. The dungeon of Defright. God, this is an awful pun. It's. So the, the thing that I mentioned with it, the World War being disappointing, this is one of the main, one of the main sources of that. Well this and all of the next, well this is the start of the disappointment really. That guy is a massive hitbox, I was not even touching him. Do you mean like this level's good or bad? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. It's, uh, you'll see. So you, you want to make sure to pick up that red gem or else you're going to be really pissed when you get to the end of this level. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with that, like, Iron Fist guy. Yeah, he anyway. seems pretty ineffectual. Yeah, you can literally walk right past him. Yeah. So, remember the, remember these, those uh, four mini-games that disappeared in World 2 and never came back? <laughs> oh, god. Yeah. So, I'm guessing we're just gonna do a gauntlet of that, then. Whoa, watch out for those guys. I was... That, I was pretty lucky on that second jump. I love that that's their way of raising the difficulty, just toss some trident dantinis in there. Well, now the spider's in this one. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, though. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And, of course, playing the minigames means playing a certain other minigame. Which is why it's going at, I think this is 300% speed. Huh. Or maybe 500%? Yeah, whatever. Mm. Seeing this minigame once is definitely enough. Uh, much this still takes forever. This is it's either this one or the next one that's at 500. One of the I sped up two sections in this video. One of them's at 300, one's at the 500 percent. It was something. I think it was this where it, it was either this or the other one as well. Like you look at it and you realize the game, even when it's sped up, it still looks slow. Yeah, this game is dead. Like, you can see it with, like, the hang grabbing and whatever. It's, like, everything's so slow for some reason. Yeah. These guys, what? Again, they're this appearing... This was the sheep game, right? Yeah, this was the sheep game and the penguin game, and they appear in exactly the same order, again. The same one as the sheeps and everything? The same as the sheeps, same as the penguins. Wow, that's, that's pretty lazy. You think it'd be pretty easy to just switch it up, or I'm, I'm sure even randomizing it could be that hard, could it? 
It shouldn't be, since they randomized the, the shuffle box minigame, and they randomized the... Well, randomized. They, the cauldron minigame is different. Oh, like it has different sets that it can be? Yeah, and I start missing them, but it doesn't matter, because it's right at the end. Oh, okay. Okay, do you, so do you have that's... like a do you have like a three strikes and out system or something like that? I think it's just you have to get a certain percentage, but I don't know what percentage that is. Okay, so that's all the mini games done. Now I want you to pick a direction, left, right, or straight. Uh, left. Man, you got really lucky. This is a balloon thing. You have to pick a direction, push it over to the door, and inflate it. If you pick, I think, straight, you get the ending gong. If you pick right, you get the ending gong and a bunch of enemies. Only if you somehow glean that you're supposed to go left do you get the ending gong and the ending door and the bonus doorway and four lives and the gobbo and all of the gems. <laughs> wow. That is, that is a supreme dick move right there. So you would have to, if you got unlucky, you would have to go through this level three different times just to get to the special level. Or both. Four different, four different times if you didn't, if you somehow managed to miss the red gem too. Oh yeah, that's true. On the plus side, this is a really good spot to start farming lives if you ever actually need them. Yeah, but I, I'm, you're at the end of the game and the game's not that hard. No, it, like, it, World 3 was where it was when it was really annoying. World 5, it gets hard, but that's because it's supposed to be hard. But World 4 is a lot easier. This is the closest thing to a maze that they have with these, like, you know, darkened underground sections. Yeah. And essentially, you're just looking for one gobble and then you're done, right? Yeah, get the key. I mean, I say maze, it's still a straight path, but... You know, it's the it's dark and you might forget if you're a stupid kid where you were going. <laughs> yeah. Or you might get scared because there's oh there's iron fists and there's trident antennas. Ooh. Yeah. And the iron fists still are never going to hit anybody. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I definitely see why this level was a disappointment. But still, uh, I mean, it breaks up the monotony. Like that's that was that's why, uh, you know, World Four is kind of interesting. A lot of the levels, especially in the second half, they break up the monotony of just screen, gobbo gem, screen, gobbo gem. Yeah. Dan Dante is really running out of ideas. He's like, fuck, a kid, fucking fine. Don't doesn't even need to be a you know <laughs> non-human kid? thing. Make him a bigger kid. With even bigger stupid buck teeth. Yeah, and now that he's heavier, apparently the balloon carries him? I don't know how that makes sense. Yeah, he has three balloons. Maybe maybe it was filled with air and now it's actually filled with helium. Like super helium. So... Big thing about this screen is that... Oh, shrinking platforms. Except the central platforms don't actually disappear, or at least the ones that the enemies get to stand on. Uh, yeah, so that's not problematic unless you don't notice it quick enough. Yeah, also, the collision for the platform doesn't actually shrink, it's just the, like, the sprite or the model. Oh, okay, so it's there until it disappears, essentially? Yeah, but it's either... Uh. Uh, Maybe. It's either that or with the other ones. The ones that shrink quickly might be. Now tell me, this look this kinda looks like you're running up to a final boss, right? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I mean it's got that oh you know, no way back and it's a single straight path, you're climbing up, it kinda gives that impending sort of feel. So yeah. what's it doing here in the mid boss? Wait, what? What's it, what's it doing for the mid-boss instead of the actual final boss? Oh yeah, because it's like the mid-boss of the world, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would, I, would, I would expect that for, for Dante, not for fucking nerd donut kid. Who throws I mean... Dynamo. If, say, if they have like a better intro for the actual Dante fight, it could work fine, but I don't know. I don't remember the actual intro for the Dante fight. 
This guy is possibly one of the worst boss fights. He, you can't even control this. Like, it, it's not. It, he throws dynamite that start walking towards you, and you use these like trampoline things to fling them back at him. But there's there's no way of controlling how they'll fling back at him. It's not even like the direction that they're walking. They will just oh. randomly spring off in a direction. So it's just 50-50 chance if it actually hits him? Yeah, see like he was walking towards me and then he flings off like at an entirely different angle. Yeah. And if they do and if you do touch them they will like make a really tiny explosion. Yeah. And this does follow the trend of like completely unthreatening bosses. Yeah, I mean, I don't even... Seems that He's also, I mean, it's also one of those bosses where it's like they don't even, it doesn't even, barely would seem, would barely seem like they're even trying to do anything. Like they're Does still he just going back Does he change as he gets through? Like, is, is he adding anything after no. he got hit? Nope. Oh, man. This is why, like, they, um, the, the Beetle boss fight, Flippy. He was the best boss fight because he actually, you know, changed things up a tiny bit. That was, was the boxing bit... one, right? Yeah, yeah, the boxing. Yeah. It was a bit more engaging. That was cool. And, uh, and so... after we killed a small child, no, oh, no, wait, we didn't kill a small child. He's just like it was rated oh, E for everyone. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, now where was I? Oh, I was left foot. I was skipping. Okay, okay, yeah, I got, I got this. Back to business. Wait, did he just walk off that edge though? No, he walked off into happiness. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's how they show that there was a hidden panel there by making the sprite flicker a bunch. <laughs> Smash and see, this is a bad level. It's a cool oh, idea. Boy. It's a cool idea that got stretched across an entire level that goes, you know, lasts for three minutes longer than it should. These dantinis you cannot hurt. Oh. That was my. That was my fault. These dantinis cannot be hurt. At all, you can't ground pound on them. You can't spin them. There's no way to, that you would know that, aside from just aside from them. like spinning them and then dying. Yeah, aside from dying a couple of times, the only way to kill them is to do that. You smash a box and then you see what happens to them. I mean, that's I kind guess. of interesting, but it would have been nice if they introduced it before just killing you. Yeah, like if they had a Dantini walk off the edge somewhere else. Yeah. So, we have to kill all of them to get the key to the door to appear. Okay. It's a bit tedious, but that's fine. Also, they have a pretty wide um, hitbox, which you'll see later on. Oh, do they walk on, like, set paths, or are they following you? No, they just walk back and forth, so that you have oh. ample opportunity to kill them. Yeah. So, that's the whole gimmick of the level. And I mean the whole level. Oh, so it's just that on repeat? Yeah, I'm so, guessing that's why you put it on flat. Yeah, there it is. There's yeah, the 500 yeah, speed. Yeah, this is 500%. This is much faster. But you notice it still feels slow. Yeah. Also, the music is in this one is absolutely maddening at 500% speed. So yeah, this is a this would have been cool, you know, for a screen or to introduce how to, to have it in several levels and have it yeah. not introduce be the, the idea. entire basis. Yeah, not have it be the entire basis of the level. And on okay. the last screen, I don't know why they are even here in the last screen since we don't need to kill them. We just have to get the puzzle piece. Maybe you got a life. Yeah, cogs seem really pointless too. They just yeah. I don't know why those are there either. Oh. Stand, yeah, standing next to him, you die. Maybe it's because like it's supposed to be like a clock tower from Castlevania kind of feel. Maybe. I guess, but it's it's hard to like really. Eh, I don't know. I, I guess I see that. It's a, it's just always the platforms are just free floating for no reason. Yeah. If there was. If there was more of the stuff from that second level where it was like, oh, cogs, you know, interconnecting, that would have been cool. Yeah, it could have been. Alright, so, ah. guess that's done. It's done. You're free. Yay. I can go back to studying for exams and stuff. Pfft, nerd. Oh.